Now let's talk about the decimator. A decimator is also called a downsampler. The picture of a decimator is very similar to an expander. But now the error goes downwards, and there's also this integer m. There's an integer m, and the output is related to input like this. The output x d n is equal to x m n. For example, x d of zero will be equal to x zero, and x d of one will be equal to x. Two and x d of three is equal to x two d of two is equal to x four and x d of three is equal to six, right? So the zero samples goes here, the two goes empty here, two sample comes here, and the four samples comes here. So it's like taking the whole x and squeeze it. So that the the samples that are not the integer of multiple will go away. So down sampler has the effect of reducing the number of samples. Now let's go to the frequency domain and see what it does in the frequency domain. To understand the relation in frequency domain, we can think of x d as such. We first pass x n through d to c, and then we resample using t prime equal to m t. Then that's what we get x d. Let's write down the Fourier transform: x in terms of x c and x d in terms of x c. Okay. X is obtained from sampling x c with the sampling period t, so we put t, t, t here, and uh, x d is sampled using sampling period m t, so we put m t, m t, m t here. Let's try to rearrange this summation so it's related to. The Fourier transform of x. Let's first write small m as such, k m plus l, because small m goes from minus infinity to infinity when we express it in k m plus l, and this l is from zero to m minus one. This k it go also goes from minus infinity to infinity. Now we can substitute in small m. By k m plus l, all right. And this is still doesn't look like the Fourier transform of x, right? So let's try to rearrange the terms. We can put one over m here, and then l goes from zero to m minus one. One over t here. And k minus infinity to infinity, and x c j. We want it to be or make something over t, right? So let's put t here, and then omega over m. And、um, there's some.、Um, and how about the second term here? The second term here, this m and this m will cancel off. Then we get k times two pi over t. This looks very much similar to the Fourier transform of x, but we still have the extra term here, l two pi over m t. So let's put it here, minus l two pi over m t. We we already have t at the bottom, so let me put m. All right, and then we can see. This is like the Fourier transform of x, right? The only difference is that the place this was omega. Now it's replaced by this quantity. So this is actually x e j omega over m minus l two times. Two pi over m. Now we can continue on. 
this is 1 over n and this is l from 0 to n minus 1 and this is x e j omega over l minus k times 2 oh sorry it's l times 2 pi over n and that's what x d e j omega is related to x e j omega and we see it's a function of x e j omega but with frequency scaling and uh, shifting frequency scaling here and shifting here this is a little bit like um, the case when we do sampling from continuous time to discrete time right it has frequency scaling and it has a shifting from earlier experience we know whenever there's frequency shifting and scaling it will be easier if we can remove one operation first and uh, in this case, it might be easier if we remove frequency scaling first. Frequency scaling. How can we remove frequency scaling? If we want to remove frequency scaling, we need to somehow multiply omega by m times omega. And we know there is one system that can help us do that. What is it? Something. That can do frequency scaling. What is it? The expander, isn't it? If we expand xd and let's say the output is wn, then we know w is related to xd like this so there will be no more frequency scaling just a frequency shifting is left And after we draw W, we can then do frequency scaling to get back XD. For example, suppose this is our XEJ omega. And it's shaped like this. 0, pi over 3, and then minus pi over 3. This is omega, and this is pi, this is minus pi. Okay, then let's first draw wej omega. After we draw wej omega, we can then draw xd ej omega. xd ej omega will be related to w by wej omega over m right let's say m is equal to 3 here and that will be omega equal over 3 okay so let's first draw w what is w w contains shifts of x and these shifts are spaced apart by 2 pi over m how many copies are there L from 0 to m minus 1 so there are a total of m copies okay so first when L's equal to 0 L's equal to 0 then this is L equal to 0 okay this is the copy L equal to 0 and say the height here is equal to 1 then the height here, there will be an extra 
1 over m here. So the height here would be 1 third. And this is 1 third. This is the copy of a 1 third x e tray omega. And uh, then the, when l is equal to 1, l is equal to 1, then it will be x shifted by 2 pi over 3. So this is 1 third x e j omega minus 2 pi over 3. Okay, and the next copy will be Next copy will be one third x e j omega minus four pi over three. Okay, but uh, minus four pi over three is the same as plus two pi over three. So let me draw it here. This is the next copy. Okay, and they are of the same height. And here it's minus pi, and here it's pi. Zero, pi over three, minus pi over three. Okay. And now if we want to get back xd, we squeeze or stretch w. We stretch it. We stretch it by three times, right? So this is omega. And let's say this is minus pi. And this is pi. This is a zero. Then this is what w look like. And this is one over three. The height remain the same. In this example, we have assumed that x is band limited from minus pi over 3 to pi over 3. So there's no overlapping between the shifts. These shifts do not overlap at all. There's no overlapping between the shifts. But when x is not band limited like this, there will be overlapping. And when there's overlapping, we say there's aliasing. For example, the Fourier transform of x is a sticking out of pi over 3 here. Now when we add up the shifts of x to get w, this is one copy of x. 0 minus pi over 3 to pi over 3 and another copy and another copy this is pi this is minus pi they will be overlapping There will be overlapping when we add up there's overlapping so this is what w look like after we add up the shifts it will look like this and this is minus pi 2 pi this is 0 and in this case the shapes is changed and when we stretch w to get xd this is what xd would look like
and we can see compare with what we have here here xd is a simple stretched version a simple stretched version of x in the minus pi to pi period but here we cannot say the same thing it's no longer a stretched version of x because there's now aliasing to avoid aliasing usually we do something before the decimator we if in the previous example we saw that if x is properly been limited like this there's no aliasing so in this case if we can filter out the part from minus pi to from minus pi over 3 to pi over 3 filter out this part then there will be no aliasing so that's what we do when we reduce the sampling rate. Before the decimator, we add a low-pass filter, an ideal low-pass filter that has from minus pi over 3, to, I'm sorry, from pi over m to pi over m. And hd, that's what hd is. H D of E J Omega. The height here is one. At the output of H D, let's say this is X tilde N, and the output will be X D tilde N. For example, x e j omega is the example that we show in the previous slide. Then this is minus pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, and it is sticking out. After we, and m is equal to 3, after we apply the ideal low pass filter, this is what x tilde e j omega look like. It would be then limited. From minus pi over 3 to pi over 3. Now when we sample x tilde, there will be no aliasing. And x d tilde e j omega will simply be a stretched version of x tilde e j omega. This is pi, this is minus pi. And the, if the height here is 1, the height here is 1, and the height here is 1 third. 